How's it going my curious bunch of bakers? Hope you're on a fine day so far. Welcome back to another video. Today we'll see what happens when we mix peanut butter straight into our bread dough. So let's get in the kitchen and get started. We all know that adding fat to our bread dough will make the bread softer. And since peanut butter is pretty much 50% fat, I decided to mix it into bread dough and see what happens. I chose to make a babka for this experiment because it easily allowed me to do the peanut butter and jam combo. So there's peanut butter in the dough and jam in the layers. The resulting bread has a very beautiful and unique look. It's got that classic peanut butter and jam flavor combo. It's very soft. It is quick to make and it's super simple. Perfect for a quick weekend project. So let's get right into it and see what we need. Starting with the ingredients, we'll need some white bread flour, smooth peanut butter. We'll also add some regular butter into the mix and we'll need yeast, salt, an egg yolk, sugar, water, some jam, I'm using raspberry jam, you can use strawberry jam, any jam that you like. And the leftover egg white can be used for glazing. When it comes to the equipment, we need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, something for spreading the jam, a little spatula will work great, but you can also use a dough scraper. We'll also need a rolling pin for rolling the dough out, and of course we'll need a baking tin. I'm using my USA pan pullman tin, but a regular 2 pound or 900 gram tin will do. However, if you are interested in this tin, you can find it in my Amazon shop, link down below. Okay, let's get to it. And it all starts with temperature control. My kitchen is currently at around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just using water that I had left out at room temperature, which is around 21 degrees Celsius or 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Grab a large bowl, pour the water into it, add the yeast, the salt, the sugar, the egg yolk, the peanut butter, and the regular butter, and then give it all a good mix. Finally, add the bread flour, grab your dough scraper, and mix it to a dough. You can adjust the ingredients here. Use any other kind of nut butter, almond butter or hazelnut butter. This bread is not very sweet, so if you want it to be sweeter, you can add more sugar. You can even leave the egg yolk out. It is there to make the bread extra soft, but if you don't eat eggs for any reason, just skip it. You can even make this plant-based. Skip the egg, leave out the butter, add some vegetable fat instead. For once I will be fermenting this at room temperature, but you can certainly ferment it in the fridge if you want to, in which case you should place the dough straight in the fridge after mixing then pull it out half an hour later and give it one fold and then leave it to cold ferment until the next day and from there you can follow the recipe as it's written. We're aiming for a final dough temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If your dough is slightly warmer, it'll ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it'll take longer. At this temperature, bulk fermentation should take no more than one hour. But since we're not kneading this dough, we need to give it a fold halfway to bulk fermentation. It will help develop the gluten. So 30 minutes in, remove the dough from the bowl, place it on the table with the smooth side down, don't worry about dusting your flour, it's not sticky, just fold it whilst going around in a circle until reach point where it started, then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table and that's the fold done. Place it back into the bowl, cover it up, leave it to ferment for another 30 minutes. By now it should have puffed up pretty big, but if it hasn't, just leave it for longer. Okay, before we move on, let's prepare the baking tin by brushing with butter. This will not only prevent the bread from sticking, but it will also give it a beautiful toasted crust. Achieving the unique shape of a babka requires a unique shaping technique. But if you have ever made cinnamon rolls or anything like them, it will start off quite familiar. Dust your dough with flour generously, pop it out on the table, flatten it out and then roll it out to a large rectangle. Don't worry about measurements, just roll it nice and thin. It should be wider than your baking tin and you can make it pretty much as long as you want. It is difficult to get perfectly straight edges and square corners, so I like to start off with a rolling pin and then finish it off by hand. Of course it doesn't need to be perfect, don't worry about it too much. Okay, once the dough has been rolled out, grab your preferred filling and spread it out in a nice thin even layer. You want to almost cover the whole surface. Leave a little edges at the sides because as we roll the dough up it might squeeze out and also leave an edge at the top, which we'll use for sealing up the roll once we roll it up. So after spreading out the filling, grab a brush and brush some water on the loose edge at the top. It will be the glue that seals up the dough. Okay, the next job is to roll this up. First, fold over a little edge at the bottom and then continue by rolling the dough up, slowly and gradually. A couple of things will happen as you roll it. First, the jam will get pushed forward and might even squeeze out the sides. So don't try to roll it up super tight. Roll it gently and after each roll, pull the dough slightly back towards you. This will provide more than enough of a tightening effect. The second thing that always happens when rolling your dough like this is that the roll will become wider than the loose piece of dough in front of it. To keep things even, you have two options. You can either push the roll in to make it narrower or you can pull the loose piece of dough outwards to make it wider. But whatever you do, 
Once you reach the end and the roll is nice and even, use that sticky edge to seal it up. And this is where the similarities with cinnamon rolls end. Of course you could turn this dough into rolls by slicing it up, but we're making babka and that requires a slightly different method. So place the dough on a chopping board vertically in front of you. The jam filling is pretty sticky, so what I like to do is sprinkle a line of flour on the dough to help my knife along. When it comes to the knife itself, use the sharpest knife that you have. Ideally, it should be a serrated bread knife. It will make light work of this. You don't want to push the knife straight down, otherwise the jam might squeeze out. Cut it using a back and forth sawing motion. The jam is pretty loose, so this might get a little bit messy. Babka works best with stiffer fillings like chocolate spread or custard. But don't worry, you'll do just fine with the jam. Once you've cut the dough in half, lay the two pieces of dough next to each other with the cut side up. To twist them together, start off by forming an X, and then twist the dough pieces around each other in either direction starting from the middle. Your hands will be all covered in jam and sticky, but don't worry about it, it will be all worth it in the end. Place the loaf in the baking tin right away. The longer it sits on the chopping board, the more it will lose its shape. That's why we prepared the baking tin before final shaping. The final proof will take around an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. During this time you want to preheat your oven, 260 degrees celsius, 320 fahrenheit fan on. And that will be 180 celsius, 355 fahrenheit fan off. I was a bit rushed when I was making this bread, so I forgot to do one thing before baking. And that is brushing it with the egg white. And if you're gonna be like me, just add the whole egg to the bread though, and reduce the amount of water by 30 grams or 1 ounce. It's not really necessary to glaze it to be honest. Okay, bake this bad boy for 15 minutes. If it starts becoming too brown towards the end of the bake, covered with some tin foil. It will inevitably become quite dark, that's because of the jam, but it's definitely not burnt. If it doesn't taste burnt, it isn't burnt. To make this loaf extra shiny and beautiful, you could glaze it with a hot sugar syrup as soon as it comes out of the oven. Simply mix equal parts of sugar and water in a pan and bring them up to a boil. A small amount will do the job, 20 grams of each or 0.7 of an ounce will do. I actually brushed mine with some olive oil to make it nice and shiny. But there you have it, that's how you make a peanut butter and jam babka with peanut butter mixed into the dough. And the answer to the question of what happens when we add peanut butter to bread dough is nothing too crazy. Just like any other fat, it makes the bread softer and in this case, it also added a nice flavor, an extra protein. I also made some little twisted muffins out of it. Jam was not the best filling for these, it all squeezed out the sides as I was twisting them up. But if you want to learn how to make little bread knots like these ones, you will find a dedicated recipe link below this video. So what do you think of this idea? And what else could we mix into our bread dough? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.